Okay. All right. Well, as, as we as we open the game, then I think the the overall um, objective here. The four of you have been together for some time. You know, the four of you for a couple of months, right? Uh, traveling. There's been some money that's changed hands. Two of you want to get to the bitter reach. Two of you are like, what the fuck? There's this war brewing between the Rust brothers and these orcs. Um, we can line our pockets and just get out of here kind of thing. Maybe there was a survivor from that battle that we talked about that knows now that, um, getting to our character names, that Khan is alive and well in this area. Right? So, uh Let's say that this was to the west and south of here, and you guys have been steadily trying to get to the east and north where you know the port cities are. And I think you've been told that you're either heading for a place called Far Vivend, V I V E N D, Far Vivend, or Margelda. Far Vivend and Margelda both have ports where you can get a ship, and maybe it's our peddler, maybe it's Stas. Was like, yeah. If we want to go to the Bitter Reach, we have to get to the, you know, to the east of the coast, to one of the cities that's uh, in Farvivend or Margelda. Um, many days travel to the pretty much due east is what you believe. Your spyglass doesn't go quite that far, but you think you have to go east to get to the coast and then go north from there in a ship. Um, so as we join the group, we'll say it's dawn. You have camped overnight in the ruins of an elven city. So I think maybe this was a stop along the way that um, Ascalon knew about. And Ascalon wanted to come to this place since you were heading in this direction. Maybe even took you a little bit out of the way to search for knowledge, to see what was, uh, you know, what, what you could find. And for sake of argument for our story, not much. You've, you've, you've found the ruins well picked over, but it's the sort of thing where uh, I can picture you're in the middle of the woods, right? But there's all of these broken alabaster and, and ivory towers and monuments and buildings that are hundreds and hundreds of years old. But they've been just smashed down by the elements. Battles have been fought here since the city's fallen. So there's there's literally, it's a, it's a complete ruin. There's not a lot of places where you can go to uh, continue to investigate or look for riches type of thing. You, you did some investigation, but you can tell these ruins have been cleanly picked over by rogues and raiders from sean's other group those bastards right they, they've already been through here um but what it means is uh you're in the woods the city's name was varasa which i think you can see i think our elf probably remembers that the ancient city of varasa but um let's have a just a brief introduction for each character and then we'll we'll pick roles and all that sort of stuff so as it's dawn in this wooded ruin. So picture as well, the trees are growing through a lot of the foundations. So it's like this mix of nature and this old elven city together as the sun is rising. Um, and there's also, you'd know that there are both orcs and rust brothers roaming these woods in this area. So it's not good to linger. Both groups are hunting each other and are basically kind of on the war path. So it's not, not a safe place. Let's start with Ascalon, because he's alphabetically first. Describe what you look like, what you're doing as you make ready to leave. Um, he ha he's, you know, slight framed like most other elves. Um, and, but his hair is like so pale, it's almost white. And, um, and he keeps it like, you know, tied back. No man bun, but um, elf bun. Um, but he, he keeps it tied back in a ponytail, but it's, it is very long. Um, and I think in the morning, for good or ill, he is almost always like humming a song that he remembered the night before from centuries ago <laughs> um and uh i try to remember what i actually 
And he's usually making some kind of tea or something for that he insists everybody, everybody drink for their health. Got it. And let me do uh, weather so I know what your tea's like, whether you need hot tea or not. Scattered clouds, 54 degrees. It's the first of summer, Wayne. So that means it's okay. kind of getting towards the end of the summer, heading for fall, and you guys have some reason to beat feet and get to this port city before the real cold weather sort of sort of comes in. So as okay. the tea is brewing and there's these smells and our elf is sipping from his hot cup, what do we see Khan doing? What's Khan look like? Khan is obviously a very young man, five foot uh, six, no, five foot eight, 160 pounds. He's got that really lean look that you see a lot of young people have, especially, yeah, I mean, he's, he's probably someone who is maybe a little bit underfed. Uh, reddish brown hair, blue eyes, freckles, very disheveled, doesn't keep up his appearance, probably doesn't feel the need to. Simple brown clothing kind of to help him blend in with the woods that he's very comfortable traversing. Um, he's checking his short bow as he wakes up, making sure the string on it is still good. Quiver of arrows, knife at his hip. And that's what you would see Khan doing in the morning, I think, as he wakes up, ra- rolling up his uh, fur um, yep. fur blanket, which is probably for him a very prized possession for someone who sleeps rough more often than not. That keeps him warm at night. Got it. Does, does he have any connection with uh, Rust or Heem still? Or has he rejected that whole faith? No, I think there's probably a branding I don't know where it would necessarily be maybe on his back the the symbol of rust and so I don't think he probably takes his shirt off all that much in public um that's something that he probably keeps covered up it's just the sort of thing where when he was a young man he was held down shirtless with a big yeah. boot as the yeah. branding iron came down the back of his neck sizzling flesh yeah, I don't know if it would be on his neck. I, I see it more on his back, maybe his left like shoulder blades. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Left shoulder blade, he's been branded. Got it. Got it. All right. Garm, what do we see our, our, our friendly neighborhood orc doing? Yeah, so, so he, he rolls he rolls out of his fur, sleeping furs, and, and rolls them up. And he's got heavy, kind of studded leather armor. Um I, I imagine like a full set that goes down kind of almost to his knees. Probably has some bracers tied around or um, yeah, braces around his arms. He's kind of checking all of that and he's wrapping his sword around his back. It seems to be the first thing he does mo- most days is make sure he's armored and weaponed no matter where they're at. Um, he's got a um, mostly shaved head, though he has a a, a very short cropped kind of mohawk, um, kind of keeps it pretty clean, pointed ears. He's got a couple earrings in um, in both ears, and he's got um, kind of a short kind of piggish nose. He's got a, a, a ring right through his nose. Um, his tusks, he's got four short ones, that um, two on each side that come up, but they, but they just barely kind of go past his lips, his upper lips, pretty short um, tusks. He's got a little bit of a beard, longer in the front. Um, he uh, kindly accepts a cup of tea, moves off to the side of the camp, and uh, makes gulping sound as it sounds as he pours it on the ground. Um, and then he brings the empty cup back over and hands it over, uh, and then goes about uh, tidying up the camp, putting the putting the tent away, trying to rouse whoever else is still sleeping, and he goes about his normal business. So Stas, are you a late sleeper or an early riser? Were you already up or is, are you the one that he's, that Garm is waking? I might be the one that, that Garm is waking. Okay. So how, what do we, what do we see of Stas this morning as they're all making ready? I, uh, <clears throat> it's a little disheveled, 
He's got a little pencil kind of mustache. Mustache. And um, he's probably getting up and brushing himself off. Seeing what's around. What's the weather like? What's it look like? Scattered clouds. clouds. Scattered clouds. Uh, it's going to be one of those days. Uh, probably look, gather it all in. And, I don't know. Um, he's like a slender guy, medium build, um, average height, maybe a little tall, taller than average, human, uh, scruffy, half shaved, you know, not a full beard, just scruffy. Um, Is he armored? I do not have armor. What's it, what, does, what does his clothing look like? Mostly leathers. Uh, probably like some type of strap. Um, like he's got a backpack. And um, I would say a lot of like a lot of strappy looking stuff. Brown leathers. Nothing dark. Um, belts straps even like things around his thighs that don't make any sense they don't serve any purpose they just look cool <laughs> uh, okay so the, all right the, the four of you um you know get get ready to move out up your spyglass what's the direction you're planning on going I presume you're going to be hiking yes North or east? <laughs> well, north, northeast, uh, southeast, south. I'll tell you this, with the spyglass, you can kind of, kind of see the edge of it. You've got deep woods to the north. You've got pretty deep woods to the northeast. You've got the woods starting to break up to the southeast and the south, which you can see from your spyglass. He's climbing up on top of one of these alabaster stones in the ruins of the Elven City. So as you hop down, put yourself in your uh, travel positions. Tell me where you're going. Yeah, what you see there, peddler? Which way are we going? Well, if I had a, if I had a choice, I'd say... Maybe to the southwest towards the river. I heard there's a river down there. And it would, the only problem is, is it may be traveled with others that also find water valuable, but maybe something might be safer than the woods, especially with the Rust Brothers and the Orcs. Mm. I, it but, sounds logical. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll stay just to the edge, though. Hmm. So that's southwest, guys. I think is it going to be this one here? Huh? We're we're going to go backwards. No, that we're going southeast. Southeast. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Yes. We have to we have to find this village, don't we, peddler? Why are you taking us back where we've already come? That makes no sense. That's, I've gotten misdirected. I apologize. <laughs> I had a, too much of a deep sleep last yeah. night. It was incredible. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure east. we weren't being tracked. East, east. It's there, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to move your token. I'll get the fog going. But um, who is leading? The, who is doing the um... con? That is me. Con! Lead the way. All right, so it's the survival, uh, and I add Pathfinder to that. Okay, here we go. Hey. Boom. Success? Yep. Okay. And who's doing the uh, keep watch? I would do that, so I would only roll if there's probably something to be kept watch. Is there something to be kept watch? I don't know if that's true. Let's talk about that for a minute. I remember in the other game, there was a 
talent that made us look at it that way, right? Yeah, Without the sense. talent, yeah, is there a reason to not do it? If there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, think, I, think that's, I think that's what it I says, think it though, right? I, I'm busting chops, but I think that's what it says. So you could, I mean, I could certainly roll. Yeah, it kind of depends on the, what you want to use the role for. It, is the role to find something that the GM knows is there? Is the role to find out whether positive or negative results determine something's there? Well, I think the, I mean, the, my interpretation was if there is, if there's a threat in that hex mm -hmm. and I, then, then I roll, roll to see. right. I right. roll no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then the result is only whether I see them ahead of time or right. not, or the GM chooses whether I see them or not. Um, and then there's ambush, which is a whole other deal. Right. So you want me to roll here again? I, uh, the... I, I, I want you to hold off just for one second. So the okay. rest of you are hiking, right? Can I, I want to, I want to actually read the, the language here for a second. Sure. And I, th I think you're moving into everybody else agree with me. That's just straight forest, right? I think is the case. The terrain type? Yep. Where are you moving? I think so. Yes, that's straight forest, I believe. According to the legend in the lower right. Scout comes into play when the GM rolls for a random encounter or introduces some kind of threat. Da -da -da. Right. Tell you what, I'll do the I'll do the research on exactly whether you should be rolling uh regardless or not i'll just make the roll and then i'll tell you okay so now i'm on the table i need to figure out how to do this one second you want me to roll scouting here again uh not yet let me make oh. the roll on the table on, gotcha. the, on the forest table and you Don't guys did not it. see that is that right oh no, we didn't see we, it we did see it there's okay. nothing there guys <laughs> <laughs> so how do I make that? How do I make that, Sean? So it's not if, if you hit the drop drop down where it this says whole drop down box at the bottom. Yeah, actually, it's on the encounter, and it says display roll to chat. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh. It shouldn't have done. It. it shouldn't have done it. I don't have that checked. No, right. but do you have public roll or? I guess it doesn't. Oh, private. I didn't roll from there. Role. No, I know. Oh. I don't know if that matters. Does it? It. it I think that overrides. So I think you let's should. let's find out. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to stick with the note with the no result yeah, and forgive sure. me for for our awkward mechanics here. No, but no. I'm going to roll one more time to see what happens. Did you oh, see that? There yeah. You go. Now it's question marks. Yep. Okay. That's so question marks. Wayne is right. That's a, that's like a the a trumping filter. Is that pri I put it as private GM role? Yeah. I've done okay. that before, and you guys have never said anything, so I only imagine it worked. <laughs> yep. Got it. Got it. Okay. So. So what happens is you you move out of Varasa, the city. Um, you come come. You can see the, the break in the terrain there, where the woods start to break up a little bit. Um, but then they thicken again. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think you can only go one wood hex in a quarter. Correct. That sound right? Travel, travel, travel. I think it's. Or can you go two? I think it's one. It depends on the woods. Heavy, heavy forest is also a terrain. So there might and be I, a difference between those, I think. That's why I was asking if you were in woods. I think you were in regular woods. In fact, I'm sure you are. The reg the heavy stuff is darker. Really? Yes. True. Yep. You're in, you're in regular woods. So you're, you guys are telling me you can go another hex, right? Yes. Uh, in a quarter, yeah. yes. Got it. So... You should be able to see you. You know you 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 hike for half the morning. Uh, it's quiet. Uh, it remains sort of that you know partially blue skies overhead. It's only in the fifties today, so it's not. Even though it's the end of summer, it's kind of cool. You can tell that the autumn is in the air, um, and it looks to you like the woods break up to the northeast of here, and you're back onto more of an open plain. You also d detect and can hear a river running to the southeast and maybe even stretching to the south. So there's water you'd have to cross if you went to the southeast. Probably if you went to the south. That's not the case if you went to the northeast. 
River crossings could be dangerous. Tricky. Tricky. Very slippery. You could follow it, though. It's a good way to f- travel. If we Just go down near the river, we could uh, fill up our our water. Are you low in water? Uh, I would say I'm yes. below half. Yes. Yes. And since we I'm are low. near, it'd be easily to go down there and stock up, if you will. Your GM will intercede here and say, since there's the, see the river in the hex, mm-hmm. right? If you make a survival roll and you guys you make a group one, if you're successful, you can fill your water at that river without losing time. If you fail it, it's going to take the rest of the quarter to fill your water. Is that a group survival roll? That'll be a group a group survival roll. Where we all roll? We all have to roll? Uh, I don't know if that's how it works. I don't know. You look, or is it we pick it. one and we aid? We pick one person and that person rolls? I think so. I, I think, think it's you pick one lowest. person and others can help. Is oh, the way that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's skip let's one month and forget all rules. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one month, forget all rules. <laughs> Well, no, I think I think up to three can help, right? I've got I've got six, right? I've got the four wits, two survival, so I'd be rolling base six. I don't think you wouldn't. Would you allow the talent um, pathfinder or path of the well pathfinder to play a role in that Harrigan or no? Uh, yeah, I would. If you're trying okay. to you're trying to navigate quickly through the woods to get to the water source and then kind of back the, in the direction you want to go in, right? And then I'm also going to get three bonus dice from these guys. You are. Sweetness. All right. If this fails, then these digital dice are cursed. (laughs) (laughs) We did use the R word. There we go. Got it. No problem. Digital dice. So you could all have D12 water. Yay. You stop by the stream. And what direction are you? Have you been any clay on that? And that stream bank? Clay. What kind of clay are you looking a, for? It's a it's an ingredient of the healing hand spell. So 50-50. Roll, roll, roll a D6 and try to get four above, Wayne. Okay. Uh, uh. Now I'm getting the air. Hmm. Mm-hmm. T- Strange. I have clay. Okay. So you have one use of clay. However, you want to track that. I don't, I made don't my imagine list. it, it weighs very much. <laughs> I imagine it's just enough for me to make a little, maybe make, maybe make a little votive of the. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, is this an ingredient for a spell? Yeah, yeah. So like, it's for healing hands. Um, Got it. So I imagine maybe you make like a little. You know, if, it, if you're going to heal their arm, you make a little arm, or you're going to. Understood. Understood. Uh, okay. Okay. Mid mid morning, you've got your your skins all filled up. The water's rushing, um, and I think I heard you might follow the river. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So you're going to go That's to the northeast. You're going to go here. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Lead the yep. way. Yes. Keep watch. All right. Uh, anyhow, why is that not doing that? There we go. Uh, We're having some issues with the dice. No, no, I'm just hitting the wrong spot on the the VTT thing to pull it up. That's all. But we're all good. Uh, Another success. Okay. So I'll take this and move it. How's the fog working, by the way? Is it clearing off kind of appropriate amounts? I'm trying to give you a little bit, a little bit of extra vision so you can see a little bit around it. Looks good. Yeah. All right. 
so as you move free of the woods and the the river sort of um, that you're following bends more to the east, as you can see. Um, so you continue following it, but you can see uh, in the long distance with the spyglass that you think there's a bigger body of water. I'm trying to give you a little more, a little more vision there. There's a bigger body of water that the river mm. bends around. It bends so it bends back around to the north and appears to dump into a what you think is a lake. And you would even say on the far side of that lake, which I'm not going to reveal because it's pretty far away, but there's probably some, you can see some mountaintops across the lake. So as you can see, you've got the river on three sides of you. So you're going to have to find a crossing. It's now noon, right? End of the end of the first quarter. You'll have to find a crossing. I can't quite tell exactly what you can see. Tell me what you can see. Can you see anything interesting? It- Looks like there's woods here and woods here, but it looks like it might be clear. And that that hex side, whatever that direction. The elf has it across across the river on both of those south and southeast. You know, pretty dense woods again. Not no denser than you were in before, but you're back into the woods, and it looks like it continues clear on the other side. If you're to pass through mm. to the northeast. Should we cross the river? We should at least take a look at it and see what it may consist of. It may be a river that is ankle deep. Who knows? So you're going to try to look for yeah. a crossing? Yeah, let's look for a crossing. Okay. Um, <laughs> here comes the river. <laughs> and Sean, I think I read in the in the book this week. Um, when you get to a river, it's a, it's actually counts as like a water crossing. So you you have to raft if you don't take the time to look for a ford. So the way we kind of we way, the way that we winged it recently is the right way to do it. Um, so you could right now take a quarter day and build a boat or a raft to cross the river. Or we can do some skill rolls that will potentially you'll lose time type of thing, right? So, so let's do this. Um, half of a, you know, it's noon, so you're starting Q two, and the in the, is it the northeast you're looking for? Is that the first place you're looking? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. You can break, split up if you want to, and you can go kind of two to a couple of different areas, but you'll have fewer dice to roll. If that, if you track, right, we're going to roll, we're going to have a roll on this hex side. And if you want to look here or here, you can do that and you'll be doing it, you know, simultaneously at the same time, but there'll be different people who have to make the roll. And what you'll be representing is that the four of you are breaking up and will be separated by up to half a mile, up to a couple miles. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what your approach is as you're as you're surveying with the spyglass we should take more time to stay together <laughs> might as well go to the northeast see if there's anything there if not then we can all together go towards the south uh, follow it south along that river and see if there's something there I mean are we in a hurry to get anywhere right now or we're not being chased figure we could take our time and it's still daylight i'm put never us in, in a sum- hurry you put us in summer wayne harrigan i did oh three uh, quarters end, of end daylight of baby <laughs> not yet is it summer Think so. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're you're at the end of yeah. You'll have another quarter of 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 daylight. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for a for a month. That is correct. So so yeah, okay. So let's, so, be, let's be patient. How many of you are trying to look for the crossing? And is anybody keeping watch? Because this is going to take. I'm going to say it's going to take half of the watch. Of the quarter. Excuse me. I mean, I'll look for Con. Will look for the uh, the crossing for sure. Okay, Con's looking. Who's helping him? Or maybe it should uh, be the peddler. I mean, Sean, you got the spyglass, right? I do. I have the spyglass, yeah. and I'm pretty decent at scouting. Yeah, you go for it. I'll keep watch. 
So right. okay. I guess the rest of us will help. Yeah. So scouting helping. at long range, it gives me a plus two, I think. So that'd be a gear bonus, right? Yep. I don't know that this is long range, but I guess you could be looking up and down the river. Not that it matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no one, wait, wait, hang on. No one helped you? Oh, I didn't yeah. add anybody for help, but I if you take yeah. off the device, if you take off the uh, spyglass bonus, because it no, leave the spyglass long. bonus on and, and right. roll two more dice. Cause I think con and yes. the elf were both helping. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh. So you tell me if you're pushing. Uh, I guess. No luck, I... no luck initially. You know, you're scanning up and down with your glass. The river's pretty wide, pretty, pretty <clears> fast <throat> moving. You don't see, a, you know, and it looks like it's over your head in all cases. I will Rushing attempt pretty... to push, but I say, I, I've got to get to higher ground. This is too many trees where we're standing. And, you know, I got to, looks like there's something just up there I could get up on a crest and maybe look down upon. God. Let's keep an eye out just for anything that might come along. Give me a second. Okay. Rot roll. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, um, that did not roll the uh, two other dice that I had from bonus, but I don't know if that so, matters. So roll those. All right. Roll those. And then I want you to tell me when you get up to higher ground, what goes wrong? Well, he, he, might, he just needs to get... Yeah, I pulled it out. But he still took two damage, so I want to know what goes wrong. Three damage, I think. Even that second one had a one. Did it? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it, the second one would have been a skill die, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right, because it came from from help, help from teamwork. Gotcha. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> so that's uh, two damage to wits. Yeah. To wits. Okay. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, so I guess I just, the hill's too much. I'm like, oh, oh, oh God, it's just like, I don't know. I, what's the temperature? Is it warm out? It's fifties. Uh, maybe I didn't drink as much water in the morning, maybe a little dehydrated or something where I just don't have enough focus, uh, disoriented. Okay. Um, so you're 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 kind of feeling it, feeling the a little dehydrated, a little tired, not as sharp as you might be. Um, but you do spot finally with your spyglass as you get to high ground, a place where you think you can ford. You probably have to go thigh deep in the water, but it's it's slow, it's a little bit more meandering than the rest of the river. You think you can get across there. So it's taking you about, you know, about three hours to do all this, right? To look. I, so you burnt you've burned about half the quarter doing to that. tell the party i think i oh my goodness my was, that hill was steeper than i anticipated uh i think i found something and it's probably not very deep it's off of the distance I, this way uh no no that way <laughs> uh, it's that way i'm pretty sure it's that way confident Anybody else really hot? It's really hot out here. I don't know what's ah, going on. It's, it's a cool breeze today, old man. Uh, I'll take I'm a... Uh, I'm an adult man. What are you calling old? Well, if you can't even get up that hill. Well, you know, it's slippery. Let's go, shall we? It's to the river. To the river! I would also say, you guys can picture what the glass would look like in this old spyglass, right? The, the discolored fisheye distortion using it for a couple of hours straight it's probably giving you a bit of a headache which may represent a little bit of your wits score as well where you've been you've had this thing that you've been looking through it and looking through it and you got a bit of a bit, a bit of a migraine going on on one side of your head all right but you guys are going to be now crossing at this ford and going into this hex right here right sure. give me the lead the way okay Boom. Strong start. Yeah. Yes. He's got lots of dice when he rolls, right? Uh, All right. Mm -hmm. So you cross the 
Uh, you know what? One second. I forgot to do something here. One second. I'm going to call that. Yes. Is that cab in there? Okay. <laughs> there is. is. Really, is really there, there is. So, so you, as you cross that river, you can see off to your left, it does indeed dump out into a lake. Um, and the lake looks like it kind of goes around. Let me give you a little bit more view here. Kind of goes around to the um, the north and the east of this point of land where the, where the cabin is, which I'll describe in a second. It looks like a pretty. It's potentially a pretty big body of water. It's not just like a, a little, you know, a little widening of the stream. This is a full-on lake that is potentially many miles long, type of thing. Um, and you can see that the trees are edging the south and, and east of this grassy plain that you're walking on. Grass is like knee high or so. And sure enough, right along the coastline of this lake, you see what looks like a um, a fisherman's shack or uh, a cabin that someone someone lives in. You don't see any activity. You don't see any smoke or anything. You just see um, uh, the wooden structure that's, you know, when you first bought, it's probably, you know, 500 yards away. It's a long distance, a long way away. And you can use the spyglass to kind of look and see that it, it looks like it's unoccupied. Um, so are you going to approach it? Are you going to continue following the coastline? What's your What's your deal here? Check and see if there's any leftover equipment. Be good to pick up a fishing line if we're going to be along the coast. Yeah, uh, it's going to be something there. I might have a stash. Can we see any? I'm sorry, I don't think you told me this. Do, do we see any smoke rising from the structure? No, no smoke. Doesn't look like it's dilapidated though. It does not look, look like if, like through the spyglass, you can tell it's not falling in. Timbers aren't falling down. In fact, um, roll me one d six, Sean. See how lucky your orientation is here. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> And all kinds this is of what items, I had in your game at one point. I know. Yeah. Like, what am I doing here? Do you, three. A three. Okay. So the door is not facing your direction, so you can't tell if the door is open or not. Let's say the door is facing the water, probably. Mm. Um, just a quick note on dice. Do you guys also see on the left-hand menu, you know, where, where it has the, the, the um, token controls and the ruler and all that sort of stuff? Do you see... The other die, the 20 sided die at the bottom, does that work any better? It's a different add in. Oh. So you could try that one if the if the, the one in the bottom doesn't work for it. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Did that, 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 that <laughs> Sean running, rolling 8D100. You got 355. That's, that's, that's pretty shitty. <laughs> well, if you're going to test it out, you might as well hit the. So Most that works better. Possible. Yeah, it, yeah. As long as you select the right squares first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you're having trouble with that other roller, you can, yeah, you can use that. Nice. All right. So basically, it's quiet. So you know there are, there are, there are birds overhead. It's not like uh, you know it's an eerie scene or anything. But the cabin the cabin is quiet. Um, you see the lake beyond. You see the woods to the you know to the east and south. You heading for the cabin, or where? What are you doing? It's now end of Q two, right? Hmm. Do I have that right? Because it, you you used the first half of Q one to look for the river crossing, so you've gone another hex. So it's oh, supper so time ish. This would be Sun's a good place to lower. to kick up the feet and maybe maybe do do hunt and get some food. We were defended by three waterway, two waterways. I agree. Uh, Garm draws his sword and just starts walking towards the cabin unless anybody stops him. Like, I'll check it out. Hmm. Tenacious one he is. All right, Garm, uh, are, you going, are you going alone? 
he sets off if anybody follows him that's yeah. their choice con <laughs> will uh have his back with his bow at the ready so i would probably be uh like one range behind him okay gotcha like you know 30 or 50 feet behind him or something like that sure yeah okay uh I'll uh, I'll turn to Stas. Are we just gonna let the youngins go? Ah, we shall go, friend. Let's go. We don't have to run with them, but yeah, I think we stay a respectful distance. Okay, so you let the other two go on ahead, but the four of you all head um, for the coast, basically, right, which is where the where the cabin is is um, sort of perched. Doesn't take too long to to cross the distance. Um, sun's getting lower in the sky, but as as uh, Sean mentioned, it, it, it's the it's still summertime, so the sun's up a lo- uh, you know sunsets not to like ten o'clock at night type of thing, right? It's it's uh it's up a, a long time. Yeah. Any fishing boats out on the water? As you get closer, yes, yes. So both both I think the two people who are closer, which is Garm and Khan. Um, as you get closer, there's a few things that kind of catch your attention. Um, there appear to be, it does look like a fishing shack. So there's a cabin or, or a shack, but there's also like drying racks for fish out behind the building. And in front of the building towards the water, there's at least a dory or a rowboat of some kind that's kind of pulled up. Um, and you also see what looks like a couple of figures laying in this knee high grass that you're tromping through. So it looks like a couple of potentially people who are either lying in wait or who are lying and not getting up. If that makes sense. Mm. And you're, you're probably within, um, you know, a hundred feet at this point, you're pretty close. That don't look good. Hey, Hey, you alive? <laughs> what are yeah, you doing? Come in. Who the, are they talking to us? <laughs> no, you see Garm pointing off into the grass to the side. Hey, with his sword. There's no movement, and the two behind you close in a little bit because you guys have stopped as you're sort of surveying what's in front of you. So the distance closes a little bit, oh. and your voice, Garm, just carries a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you can see now across the water. In fact, I'm going to give you this because I think it's probably the limit of what the horizon is here. Garm, you're not moving. What's going on? Who are you talking to? The grass? some hills over there. No movement. Interesting. Uh, Some some maybe corpses lying in the ground. I'll go check it out. And Garm just moves over and his intent is to prod them with the sword. If he doesn't see anything else. Okay. Uh, anybody, Con, you go with him? Uh, you know, yeah, trailing behind I'm going to stay, uh, I guess, that near range. Yep. And guys, weapons, uh, for, for the rest of you, what weapons are in your hands or not? I have my knife. <laughs> <laughs> my element knife. I have my axe. I'll grab my axe. You have your necromancy. So there's no, well, actually not. There's no sling in this game. That's crazy. We can put one in. No, I think there I is. Think there is. There is. Yeah. Under ranged weapons, I, it is not listed there. Is it under bullet or sling stone? Hey, uh, uh, we don't need to stop for this. That's okay. Yeah. I'm just. We'll put I'm one just... in if there's not. I think there is one too somewhere, but. Okay. Um, That's right. So Garm uh, and Khan behind you, both, both you know, uh, sorry, Khan bow out or oh, yeah. or. or yeah. Okay. So it looks like there's two figures and you would suggest as you approach that Garm, that they're either dead or unconscious. They are not mm-hmm. moving. Um, and it looks like an adult and then maybe like a, not a young child, but like a 10 or 12 year old kid, you would think both mm-hmm. laying on, laying on the ground, unmoving, both dressed in a way that would suggest they are sort of local fisher folk, they're in, you know, homespun clothing and that kind of thing, right? Can we see this yet? Or they are they're still ahead of us? 
you can now see that there are what you think are they're still ahead of you, but you think there are bodies on the ground, but you, you're not getting as good a look at them to tell. The, I'm, I'm going to move over there. Okay, yeah, I'll be. I, yeah. I'm a little more excited because raw materials. I mean, there's bodies that. Um... <laughs> yeah, when they look like they're not moving and whatnot, um, and they may be dead. That's Garm will kind of pull up, kind of a defensive posture, and and kind of nod towards uh, as an Ashalon, Ascalon, Ascalon, Ascalon. Yep, Ascalon, and kind of he knows we we've been traveling for a little while. This is your neck of the woods, as they say. Got it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, oh, go ahead. Ask the one. Uh, when I get up there, I want to. I want to try to figure out what, what, what killed him. So, a- any objection to the four of you sort of gathering around these two bodies, or to someone, the two of you who are up front? Did you want to do something different before they caught up? I guess my. Go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say, I, if I know what's going on, I would probably, and they're kind of going to engage i would kind of hold back a few feet look around make sure there's nothing okay that would have caused uh, this so all right so you're trying to get a little bit better sort of lay of the land like is someone watching us right now is right. There, you know what's what's going on Ascalon sounds like you're like putting you're you're, you're double timing it now to say Ooh, what's what's going on over there right and right. phil you were going to say something what's con doing yeah uh, um staying near range to the to the two bodies in the grass but now my attention is focused on the fishing hut in particular i guess if the doors if we're facing the door or if there are any windows just making sure there's no signs of movement coming from in and around that area got it the hut has windows but they're shuttered with wooden shutters and they're closed okay. the door you'd have to like walk past the bodies and go to the front by the water so you can't see the door from here okay as long as my, um, I really want my attention on the, the hut. So that's fine. Got it. Got it. So there's two of you that are more or less standing watch. Um, Garm and Ascalon, you probably approach the bodies at about the same time since the old elf is like as fast as he can <laughs> t- t- trying to get closer. <laughs> um, so the, the, you come upon the like legless movement. Sorry. That's right. You're just kind of <laughs> flying along. Exactly. Um, the first body looks like. Um, the the you know this this guy's an adult he's older he's probably in his 40s and he's face down and you can see blood in the grass beneath him in this long grass that he's sort of face planted on doesn't have a weapon in his hands i'll um, roll them over okay you take him and roll him over again has these homespun clothes and whatnot as you do that his head lulls and his neck yawns this red wide gash something has opened his throat um, it's sort of sticky. There's no, no longer blood sort of uh, pouring out. That's happened clearly maybe a day or two ago, something like that. So there's, there's already the smell of, of rot that's going on. But he's, mm. it's a bearded man. His face is ashen. His teeth and mouth are open. He clearly was um, murdered or killed by having his throat, his throat cut. I want to look just... I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to get too, you could tell me this is too, you know, NCIS, but I want, <laughs> I want to just look and see if he, like, look at his hands and look to see if it, if he was trying to defend himself at all before this happened, or would this just like someone creep up behind him? And I think you're going to need to give me a wits roll. Is there a skill that would apply to that as well? I think healing. So you're looking for like defensive wounds, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking healing might just because I'm used to seeing this, um, or I don't know. Survive. I'm not so sure. I'm going to give you healing on that. Okay. I think it's straight wits, unless there. Right. Well, let me let me see this the list of skills here, briefly. Scouting lore, survival, insight, um, insight. Maybe. Insight's more like telling somebody's lying or something like that, isn't that? If you're it wrong. is. Is there a way to do the description of the thing right from the sheet? 
I do not think there is. I do not think so. No. In this case, just go ahead and roll straight wits. Okay. If you'd be so kind. So based on the position you found him in and turning him over and then looking at like his knuckles and that sort of thing, you would think this guy was like surprised. He didn't see it coming. Okay. I'll say that to everybody else. Um, and I'll check the other body to see if it's similar. So crossing to the other body, um, this one's face up. Throat is also cut. Looks like it's probably the guy's son. There's a, there is a, uh, a resemblance. Maybe maybe a 10-year-old. It's grim. And mm. uh, Khan, you've seen the Rust Brothers do this kind of thing before. You don't know that this was them, but it's not unlike them. If the, if the wrong exchange happened, it would not be unlike them to yeah. leave bodies in this kind of state. Has the feel of the Rust Brothers? I don't know. I'm surprised. Have they left the fish behind on the drying racks? Does do they, we see? They some, have. They have. Strange that they would have left the food, but this feels all kinds of off. I don't know if we should linger here. We might want to keep moving. Ah, uh, they already killed who was here. It means they've been here and gone. You should be okay. Plus, they're out there. If we move on, might not have a fortification. Two sides of water. I don't know if I'd call that shack a fort, but <laughs> it's better than a tent, piece of cloth. It's, it's stoutly made. It burned nicely. They should have a boat. <laughs> what? I <Nothing>. think <laughs> it's true. We could always take to the water. No, get on that boat been, and take it down the river. There should be a, down, down across the lake. I yeah, understand there should you don't have want to a do it this late maybe. in the day. No, 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 that's, it's true, it's true. Maybe we'll stay here the night, then maybe you're right, Peddler. We got all this fish we could eat. True. Ask Alon, what were you trying to say? I just meant we should check and see if their boat is still here. If they're fishermen, they should, there should be a boat. Khan spotted it earlier, and there is one. It's like a two-person dory type of thing. Rowboat. Oh, was it? Is it out in the water or is it? It, it is pulled up on shore. It's beached, okay. but it's, you know, it's eight feet long, nine oh, feet long. Okay. It's not, it's not a giant Sorry, boat. I missed that. Um, no sail. It's just a rowboat. But I would imagine piled near it that you can see would be netting lines, all the fishing gear that would go with that, all the tackle and everything. Excellent. You have not been to the front of the building yet and you have yeah. not searched the bodies yet. And I got uh, my arm stuck. We'll, we'll wrap up in 10 minutes if, if people are cool with that. Let's, yeah. Let's uh, we'll search the bodies first and then let's check the rest of the play, place. Okay. The man, let me make this roll public. I think I'll try to do it like Sean does. Oh. See Bunches what we get. Bunches of Priscilla dice? Oh, oh, the, he's rolling on 20. the chintzy table, the nice yeah, table, exactly. the real expensive table. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bronze statuette that the man has let's say it's in his pocket okay um let's say it is of a dragon it's a small little dragon bronze statue probably worth some money not very well made 23 copper so it's probably hammered it's not like it's been cast or anything it's more like folded copper almost like brass or copper sheet origami type of thing Little dragon wings, that kind of thing. And then on the boy, eight copper coins in his purse. So maybe they were searched, maybe they weren't because they weren't carrying anything of tremendous value, but whoever killed them didn't take these things. What's your next move after you search the bodies? Oh, check out the front of the building. Okay. 
Uh, so Garm wants to go do a circle around it. All right. Look so you the do windows. A, you do a wary circle. Um, the windows are not look inable because they're shuttered. So there's no glass. This is, these right. are not glass windows. These are windows that have wood, big wooden heavy mm-hmm. shutters on the outside that pull and latch. Uh, but the front door is open. So as you go around to the front of the building, there's a couple of you know rickety wooden steps that lead up to it. It looks like it's probably a one room cabin type of thing where there's there's probably a hearth in there, a couple of beds. As you kind of peek in, it's dark, mm-hmm. but it's also light outside, so you can see a little bit in there. It looks like it's pretty clearly the quarters in the building that these two lived in. Nothing's moving. Garm has his sword out and he'll take a couple steps in, kind of look around. Doesn't sound like he has to, there's no like other rooms, like you said. So he just kind of steps in and looks. That's right. Steps in and it is indeed, it's a one room sort of place. Inside it's dim light. You can sort of three, see through some of these shuttered windows I've described are letting a little bit of light filter through, through the slats, through the edges, that kind of thing. A uh, couple of beds, a work table. Lots of lots of gear, you know. There's there's boots in here. There's um, some um, some wood where they were either carving or trying to repair some of their kit type of thing. It looks very much like a utilitarian um, fisherman's house where they subsistence live. Do you search it carefully? Do you exit? What do you do? Ah. Uh. Garm would step across and open some of the windows to allow more light in and then kind of wave others in to look. Okay. Yeah, I like to look around. Fun will come inside as well. If you want, I'll stand watch outside if you uh, you three want to look. I'll well, stay I'll, outside. I'll, I'll stay outside with Garm. Oh, sorry, you're not going <laughs> in, Sean? <laughs> you're all I was outside. I thought you guys were going no, inside. I'm going to go in. I just figured I figured the peddler would want to go in to see what he could loot, but uh, I'm gonna start setting up my bear trap and see if I grab anything for lunch. You have Ciao. a bear trap. A bear trap. <laughs> uh, bears are down by the river in these parts. Shot. Nice. Nice. All right. So Ascalon is you the only person who goes inside then? Garm will stay in if if okay. Stas doesn't come in. So inside, you find some coins and a knapsack. Nice. There's other things in here, too, you guys can imagine, but nothing that you would consider to be of value that you'd take with you, right? Like, you know, if there's a, if there's a carving knife, it's not better than the carving knife you have on your belt already type of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Is there enough fishing gear to, to gain fishing gear? Uh, I would think Absolutely. In fact, I would even say if two of you wanted to grab, grab enough for fishing gear, you could. Fishing line, whatever you know, whatever they call it, fishing line and tackle. Line, line and hook. Uh, line, and, so line and hook. I thought the game master would remember those. I do. Except I lost mine early on. So you did. That was like a year and a half ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who if else you, has if, a good survival yeah. skill? I know Khan does. Yeah. Anybody All right. Else? I have a little bit. Okay. I'll add that. I'll take some okay. fishing line and hooks. Perfect. Is there a shovel or an ads or something like that? Um, I'm just thinking about burying the bodies. Certainly there would be uh, a tool of some kind, probably a, probably a, a not very well-made shovel. Okay. If you're going to bury. So with the, I'll, you know, with, with this, with the sun waning, and, you know, a, a, at least a, I won't say that you've turned every floorboard over and look behind every single thing in the house. You have to spend some more time doing that. You've done your cursory view. You left the bodies outside. What's the next kind of move? I see you're, you're ready to pounce, Wayne, but what's the, what's the next sort of large, you know, you're going to make a camp? Are you going to move on? What's the story? Bury the bodies. I would like to bury the bodies. And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't stay here because we can make a fire. We won't be seen. The fire won't be seen. Whether we make it fire outside, it will be seen. Um, and we could put somebody on the roof or whatever, to look, look around or, um, but I also want to look for one other thing where their little kitchen is and mm-hmm. see if there's a little 
bag or box of salt? Salt. Uh, throw a 1d6. Five or six, you'll have some salt. Nope. Negative. Yeah. You probably find uh, a, a little pouch and you're like, oh, oh, you can smell it and there's like nothing left. They always <laughs> use the last of it. Is there just a little pouch or just, I'll just, or I can cut a little, you know, strip of cloth or something like that I can find? Picture a fisherman's cabin. For that kind of thing, there's all kinds of stuff in here, right? Okay. There's little, I, just, little, I just want yeah. something like that. Yep. And I'm going to walk container. down and, and see if there is any like dry sand, not clay, but like on that where the there's just a, a patch of sand instead of clay. Sure. There's sand. Okay. A handful. All right. And I'm going to put a little bit of that sand into the, into a little, into a little cloth and make a little bindle out of it. And then go ask, sorry, I don't know everybody's name yet. Garm, if he'd help me bury the bodies. Of course. I'll go okay, so start digging. So, so as you, as you do that, we're moving into Q3. So we might want to put a pin in it right here uh, so I don't take you guys too long. And we'll, we'll pick up basically at the beginning of Q3 um, with burial, uh, keeping watch, resting, and all that kind of stuff, which you might want to do. Uh, okay, let me do one thing here. I'm going to drop the uh, – I have another little – where is it? Can I ask Garm a question while we're burying oh, yeah. the bodies? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Garm, you know that I have the ability to – You've seen me like you know speak to bodies and and things like that. Um, yeah. I need um, some special ingredients to do some of my spells. I wonder if you'll help me out here while we're burying these bodies. What kind of ingredients? <clears throat> uh, that little boy's left hand. Mm. <laughs> and I'll I'll lay my little bindle of sand out and say, I was hoping for salt, but this ought to do well to keep it for a while. You'll all be wishing for Kasha before the night's over. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, do you need me to like cut it off? Like, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need, I need, okay. just need the hand. All right. I, I'll, I'll I like kinda... you know, right about there. <laughs> it, it ends up a little like an inch too high up on the wrist because he just picks up the wrist and just hacks at it with a sword. Okay. Just, nope. I'm, I'll pick like, it up. I, I, I would like our, our orc, have you done this kind of thing before? Have you done a lot of butchering of dead bodies before? Um, I'm going to say yeah. I think uh, I think before his uh, his clan was taken out he was pretty ruthless. I mean, you were, you were part of like a war band, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yep. No, hesi no hesitation. Yep. Kicks, kicks a couple of cuts, chunk bones exposed. Another cut, you have to twist and kind of crack the bones a bit, but you get the limb off eventually. <laughs> 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 okay. And you I have will, I will, the young man's hand. I will put it in and kind of wrap it very gingerly in the, in the I will take real good I'll take care. I'm not, and um, and before we bury the young, I will I will say, thank you, young sir. You you might help us um, one day. You might save a life one day. There you go. <laughs> All right. Any last parting shots before we close up? You can see that I put a couple of like, Adding um, to my checklist <laughs> ghostly markers down where you guys walked so we can start to track okay. oh, the hexes you, hexes you've been through. Um, hopefully that will work. Um, do you want to do experience? Do you want to, or you want to, I know it's midnight for two of you. No, so that's we can fine. Just, yeah, we can do that. And like the, the copper coins too, are we dipping that up? Is someone taking the statue? How did you want to do that? You guys figured mm -hmm. all that out right now. There you go. Okay. So, There is a statue, and there are what twenty six copper coins and a knapsack. Yeah. 
So we could each take six, what is that? Six copper coins. Oh no, it doesn't go any lower than that. Hang on. Two could take six and two could take seven. Is that what they're I'll take about? seven. <laughs> I'll take Service six. Service is rendered. You I'll would be six. lost or attacked if I weren't part of this party. Take six, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If I'll we go over on the well. next one, then somebody else could have the leftover. Hey, uh, Stas, you want this? And he holds up the statuette, the dragon. Ooh, what is that? Maybe ask my elven friend if he recognizes this thing as being of importance or of huge value. It looks very valuable. Ask Alon. I think it's a votive for the worm. I'm just making that up. <laughs> Why would those two strangers be dead outside, but these valuables be found inside? This makes no sense. No, the, wow. these, the, the, the little statue was found on the, um, guy. On the, man, on yeah. the guy. Oh, they were on the, they were on the people. This was on found. the, 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 the father. I see. Yeah, the Rust Brothers, they might kill a man for carrying such a thing. They would see it as a false god. They didn't destroy will, it, though. Then I will keep it, just to spite them. If we need to sell it, well, we'll cross that river when we come to it. They have crossed one river so far, successfully. Yeah. I Khan might pull Garm o o aside at some point when Ascalon's not around and, and kind of whisper to him, careful with that Delph has got you doing. That is unnatural business. <laughs> unnatural. I've seen the Rust Brothers do similar things. Be very careful what he asks of you. You don't want to fall into the dark hole he might lead you with that weird deathy magic of his. Yeah. That's true. But yeah, it's kind of weird cutting off a kid's hand. It was very disturbing to see. I mean, he's going to use that for some kind of purpose. Who knows what it'll be. Just watch out. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Garm takes like a big deep breath and just blows. And hmm. I'm just adding raw materials, little boy's hand. To my character sheet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Run out of inventory <laughs> slots. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. It's all hands. And, <laughs> yeah, toes. Now, do you get remember? rid of a nose. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember how much how much Wayne made fun of me when I was asking if there was candles or cloth? Yeah, and like I did. Random stuff, and you're like, chalk. Oh wait, chalk. chalk. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh wait. Yeah, this all I has have, a purpose. I, I literally have my list. So right. Yep. All righty. <laughs> Well, cool. I couldn't. I couldn't even stop you from role playing further when you were counting. You're your giving up your coins, so <laughs> can't be all bad. Did, uh, did, was this was this okay tonight? I know we're a little little oh, all, yeah. all, all over the place with character yeah. generation, but is what it is. Yeah, that's no, it's great. No, it looks good, man. I'm, oh yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, all right. Well, thank you all cool. for all right, all. Yeah, that, that was, was great. fun. Thanks, Harrigan. Yes, thank you, Harrigan. This, this has been a Litterbox, Litterbox Studio production. production.